Hi everyone, welcome to the first video for the Harbin Summer Studio. This is looking at how to use Rhino and Grasshopper for some uh, urban design analysis. So the first thing we need to do is have open Rhino 7. Make sure your file was in meters. And then um, I'm going to use a sample project but you will have a master um, file of Harbin and you should have in that your lines for your center for your road center lines and then building footprints or outlines of your buildings and these building footprints in Rhino uh, look like this. They're surfaces. But they're just really for visualization. So in this view, we can um, see where all the buildings are. The next step is to open Grasshopper. So in Rhino, you type in Grasshopper. And before we get started, we need to install the correct plugins. So you have this file here with the plugins for decoding space and human. So if you go to file, special folders, components. And then in here you have And then in here, we will need to copy our decoding spaces file into the libraries like this. And this is how this should look. And inside this folder, you will also find the user objects. So you need to copy this user objects out of this file from libraries and move it into the user objects file here. And the second thing you need to look at is to take human, copy that and paste it into here. And just to make sure there are no problems, right click on the human, go to properties, and make sure you hit unblock. And you should do that for all of your plugins to make sure that they're all done. Same with decoding spaces. You should come in, find the decoding spaces and make sure that you ha don't have to, um, that you don't have the option to uncheck. If you do, make sure you click it. Okay, so before we get started, you're going to need to close Rhino and Grasshopper and then reopen it to make those changes. So once you have reopened Rhino and Grasshopper, in the file supplied to you, cl click and drag number one into Grasshopper. The script should have opened without any warnings and you should now be able to see this script on your screen. Okay, so you can see on mine that we have some color. It's important to note that the way this Grasshopper script works is the name here, and you can double click to change it. This name, including capitals, must match your layer name for your street network. And building footprints must match building footprints. So now if I turn my layers off in Rhino, we can now come over to the centrality street network. And over here, if I cover my mouse, hover my mouse on CC, it tells me a little bit about what this analysis is. And you can refer to uh, 
Barbalos from 1950 to find out more about what is the thinking behind this particular algorithm. One of the variables here is the analysis radius. I'll come back to that in a second. And over here is visualization. So if I select everything, I can right click and preview off. And then I can right click preview on. What this does is it gives you a analysis for the connectivity of all the roads in your city. And it shows you where some of the major arterial networks are. This is something that you could possibly consider when looking at where to put your super block and how not to disrupt the flow of the city. This one, if I turn that on to preview, that just previews the buildings. This previews the outlines of the buildings. And this one here previews the building surfaces. So I can turn that off for now. I mean, I can also change the color by clicking here. But if we're focusing more on the road network, what we can look at is this analysis radii. So if I want to just do an analysis based on 500 meters, you can see now that it looks at, um, gives you an analysis based on the density of a 500 meter radius. We can also play around with other options like the lower and upper limit and that just controls, as you can see here, the colors. Green mean, meaning not very connected and red meaning very connected. We can just control the preview. So this is for visualization. If you set this to zero, you do the analysis for the whole city. And that's it for closeness centrality. So the next script to look at for the macro is the shortest path. So also in the folder, click that and drag and drop onto the canvas. So you should still have your street network and your buildings referenced. And if I want to turn that on to have a look, I can set the preview. So my buildings are still there. I now have two orange components here for my origin point and destination point. And you can see I've got two new layers, origin and destination. So make sure you have your origin point selected with a tick to say this is the active layer. We're now going to select a single point and place it on the file and then we're going to come to the destination point. Make sure that is set as the active layer and I'm going to do the same thing for my destination. Give it a few seconds to load. And there we go, we have our start and end point for our destination. So I can move this out of the way a little bit. And now if in Rhino I select the point and I move it, it's going to update and show me the shortest path from my new start point to my end point. I have to move my end point. 